Hey guys, it's Maggie Linneman. I just did an interview with the Zach Sang Show and we talked about my new album, relationships, and old songs. <laughs> old, old music. Old songs. Old songs, pretty girl. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, beautiful human. My name is Zach. I'm double fisting Celsius's because I have a problem. <laughs> That's Dan. We hey. welcome to the studio, Maggie Lindemann. Hey. Did I say your name wrong or right? No, you said it right. I, you know, the la- the first time you came on, I said it wrong. Did you? He always adds, he, uh, adds an R every the time. The R. Lindemann. Everyone does that. Yeah. Everyone does that. I'm severely dyslexic. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I do flip letters. Mm-hmm. I do very much add letters like i I just let my brain do so much it's okay it's literally happened to me my entire life everyone adds an r even like people that are tweeting me like adding my name they'll be like maggie linderman i'm like it's right there (laughs) but it's all right you could have if you wanted like adopt a stage name but you didn't that's your real name right that's my real name Mm -hmm. i mean it is a beautiful name thank you did you ever think maybe i should take on a character okay so like i think that now more than I did back then. Like, I'm always like, damn, I wish I had a stage name. Cause like my best friend has a really cool stage name and I'm like, I wish I had a cool stage name, but Mm. I've like always used my real name since the beginning. So it's like, I can't switch it now. Now 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 it's- You're committed. Yeah. You could maybe do another project one day where you invent something. I could. Never say never. Never say never. Do you like, honestly, like even hanging out with you right now, like. You have transformed over the years. <laughs> Thank you. You have like evolved and grown into a, a a person that like when you look in the mirror, do you know? Do you remember? Like, can you look at like who you are today and be like, I I remember the pretty girl phase. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Like it's so weird though, cause I'll see pictures and like people will um like quote tweet something that I tweeted or like bring up old stuff and I'm like oh like I tweeted that corny shit like I (laughs) said that like that's so embarrassing or I'll see stuff I wore and I'm like it's just so crazy because it just like I know who that is but it feels so distant How, how, how have you changed what's the biggest difference today I think I'm just like older I just grew up um and uh I don't know I think like my whole view of life and everything is so different now than it was and I just I don't know just like growing up and um just finally accepting like who I want to be and not really caring as much as like what people think um kind of just changed like my whole mindset what role does music play in Maybe self-discovery, definitely it's an extension of you, right? Mm Mm-hmm, definitely. You can hear the change in the records you put out there. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, music is, like, literally my whole life. It's, like, music, and then it's, like, my world just revolves around it. So, Mm. um, I don't know. Music is, like, in everything I do. Like, what I wear, like, what I listen to, what I, like, the interests I have. I don't know. Music is just, like, such a focal point in my life i didn't know until recently that the first song you ever wrote your first single knocking on your heart Mm. deeply deeply personal yeah (laughs) like really it's about a friend of yours who died yes i mean is that the first time you ever write an original record um so i've written other songs but they were just like terrible like absolutely awful um so yeah that was like the first one was it the first original song you chose to share with somebody like the public um yeah well okay so actually couple of kids was the first song but it just came out after got it so knock on your heart is second but it was first understood so, the second yeah. one you made but first you shared yeah Got it. Mm-hmm. When you write a song that personal, does it like solidify what music means to you? Um, I guess so. Yeah. Do you write from that moment after about highly emotional moments? I only write about like very emotional moments. I I'm not really like an emotional person in real life. Like I don't um I don't like talking really about my feelings and I don't 
I don't like to get like super personal and like mushy and like I'm definitely not that person like you asked me like oh how are you feeling today I'm not about to be like oh my god like let me tell you I'm gonna be like oh I'm chilling like even if I'm not chilling like I'm not about to like talk about it so for me music is like the only way I will talk about things that are affecting me so music is like everything that's my place to just like let it all out how often do you write songs so as of recently I haven't been writing as much because I've just been focused focusing so much on the album and like photo shoots and the stuff coming everything yeah. I have coming up but um normally I I work like five days a week four days a week writing songs so four songs a week five songs a week do you go into studios with lyrics or concepts or do you go in just like blank slate ready to do whatever it kind of depends like sometimes I'm not going through anything and like life is really stale so I'll just like make something up or think about something that happened like years ago or whatever but um I usually go in with something going on like I enjoy going to the studio more when I have something to talk about so usually there's something actually happening what are the better songs forcing something or not forcing something like coming up with something that's mm -hmm. not real or writing about something that's real real definitely I always like exaggerate it just a little bit because sometimes it's like not that deep and then I'll like make it seem like it's like it was like the end of the world but um yeah definitely when it's real it's like it's easier to write so what was going through your head or what were you going through when you wrote you're not special because like mm -hmm. that's not the song you want written about you yeah um so basically you're not special is just about this person that's like always just like trying to push my buttons like do things that they know I'm gonna like see like I don't know just someone that would like go out of their way to try to piss me off and it's like dude it's annoying like I'm seeing what you're doing and it's really annoying but it's not like you're not that special to me like you're not a big person in my life that's going to affect me you're you're just being annoying and um yeah this is annoying person <laughs> <laughs> a message to a person a person yeah mm. Mm -hmm. sucker punch yeah. what is that I mean I know what it means literally mm. are you talking about an emotional sucker punch uh yes an unexpected blow or punch <laughs> um, emotionally for sure uh yeah I felt like writing this album was like the whole time I was just getting hit and hit and hit like not literally but emotionally for sure and um and then I like watched the movie Sucker Punch and I was like oh my god this is it this is the name this is what I've been going through yeah this is yeah it was just like a moment I was like oh it's perfect so how, how far into this like I'm assuming being a, like sucker punched in life it's not just like one blow it's a collection yeah. of blows so how many blows in are you until you realize you gotta <laughs> fucking write an album about it I know that sounds terrible how many blows in I mean come on a good blow good blow um it was a couple blows um <laughs> it's like um I think on my like I don't know like every song is is a, about something else like about something different there's like a couple songs that are about like the same person or like whatever but like everything's really about like different blows I was going through got it so um yeah after like maybe the fourth or something I was like this is one for sure it's like one thing this is an album yeah you, it, it became apparent yeah yeah uh, how do you yeah. approach a debut album compared to like the EPs and music you released before because like debut is pretty big deal also yeah. crazy to think that this is your debut album because I know we've mm -hmm. talked to each other a couple times now mm -hmm. it's wild yeah but it's, also pandemic it's just cr it's crazy because like yeah whenever I say that I'm like it's nuts because I've been making music for so long but I haven't been like been making this music for that long um but I don't know the difference ha it's like weird it's really stressful like I'm really nervous because I'm like you obviously want it to do, to do good and you want people to like it but I don't know I um I'm just like excited and I just want it to come out now because I'm already over it I've like listened to it so many times and like worn it out that I'm just like so ready for it to come out and just like ready for everyone to hear it is the type of music you're uh, how would you categorize what you're making now 
is I, I hate like asking that question because I think putting art in boxes is just fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. But like, is it rock music? Is it alt music? Alternative rock? Um, yeah, right? Yeah, I think it's like, there's some songs that are like pop punk, more alternative. There's some that are more pop. Um, there's some that have like, I don't want to say I make metal music because I don't, but there's some that have like metal undertones, like harder guitars and stuff. Um, so I don't know. It's really all over the place. Like I don't have, I think, just like one sound. I know a lot of people just say I make pop punk music or whatever, but um, I think it has like a lot of different vibes in it. Were you able to hear the sound that you were, you've achieved today in anything you release in your Pretty Girl phase? No. The story is similar, maybe? <laughs> um, I mean, like, I feel like it's just so, they're just so different. Like, I think, like, I couldn't make Pretty Girl now, and Pretty Girl of me couldn't make what I'm making now. You know, like, I just think they're just so different. Maybe, like, I don't know. I don't, know. I don't think the world's just go together at all. <laughs> but it's Weird. all you. It's me, but it's, like, not me because it's because who I was at that time like what I was talking about in pretty girl was so me at that time like that's what I was going through and it was like no one was taking me seriously because I'm like this pretty girl on Instagram and like no one really cares (laughs) um and it was just like that thing of trying to be like no I want to make music like I'm an artist like that I started making music on social media like when I first started I just want people to see me as this um and I still you know go through that sometimes people being like oh she makes music like I thought she was just pretty it's like yeah I make music so I I don't know I I can still relate to that but I think I would just say it so differently now in a song like I wouldn't be like fuck your ribbons and your pearls you know what I mean um so what what changes confidence understanding of who you are I think understanding of who I am like my confidence is definitely completely different now like what is I think confidence is attached to understanding and figuring out who mm -hmm. you are right definitely I I think I'm just I was 17 when we made pretty girl i'm 24 now so it's like i think i'm just i just grew up and i have such a better understanding of like myself and who i want to be and just who i am in general like i am i'm so much more confident in myself and like just everything about me even like i would never do something that i didn't want to do now i'm so focused on who I want to be and like what I want to do and I think back then I was so like swayed I was easily swayed if someone was like oh you should wear this oh you should say this you should do this like that's who the pretty girl me was like just very like okay like I just want to make music I'll do whatever and now I'm like I want to make music but I want to do it how I want to do it so it's like same person just completely completely different mindset 100% I I really I understand that and I also understand that like it is easy to be swayed when you're first starting out because one, yeah. you don't know, and then two, it's almost safer to like go with what somebody else is suggesting because if it doesn't work, you know, yeah. you can at least look to that. Blame someone. Yeah, my thing back then was like, I was just so young and I had no understanding of music at all other than like, I just like to make it. So when anyone with like, music history would be like no you should do this this is gonna work you should like dress like this you should act like this yeah I just trusted them and then um it was the whole thing like if it didn't work it was like oh well you told me to do this and it like it fucks with your head because it's like but it's you you're you still made that decision like even though you were swayed to do it like you still made that decision Mm -hmm. and that was something that like really fucked with me so now it's like you, I, I'll listen to your opinion and like I'll take it and think about it, but I'm probably not gonna listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you know who you are. Yeah. Pretty cool. Thanks. Do you so, approach social media differently now though? Because you kind of mentioned like you were just a pretty girl on the internet. Yeah. Do you approach that differently so people don't view you as that anymore? Definitely. I have such a love hate relationship with Instagram. Like I love looking at Instagram, but I fucking hate posting. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I. I struggle really bad with posting now because I just like never even know what to post like I only post like when I have something going on and like I want to post like you know a flyer like a photo shoot picture or something like that um or like my Swix drop stuff like Mm -hmm. that like that's when I I post but I struggle to actually post just like myself when I'm not doing anything work related um but yeah and I know a lot of people too like on Instagram that are 
musicians struggle with the same thing because mm -hmm. it's like you don't want anyone to just look at you really for your looks like you want people to focus on the music so you try to just post more about music um but yeah it's like rare that i'll take a selfie and be like i'm posting that but isn't it frustrating when you post something about your music and it gets like i don't know let's say 10 likes and you post yeah. a selfie and it gets 100 likes and you're like what the yeah fuck? it's really frustrating and i think i think um i I think it definitely has to do with people just like want to see your face but I think it it doesn't only mean that it's just like people do like your face like even artists I follow like I love their music but if they post a picture of their face I'm like oh my god you look so good in this girl True. like you know I like it but it's like I still want to listen to your music and stuff so I don't know I try not to think too into it but mm -hmm. it definitely bothers me well people also want to be invested in who you are because they mm -hmm. they get to see a certain side of you through the records you put out so yeah there's a level of investment there and wanting yeah. to know like what's up and who you are and i don't know people are more prone to give their money and support and time and energy to somebody they know yeah. and understand yeah and that's the thing too it's like you have to find balance between like you know being being online you have to <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's like so out of there you have to find the balance between like you know being invested in like posting yourself and like who you are and like giving them a piece of your personality and like a piece of who you are so there is that connection because obviously like fans crave that kind of connection um but yeah it's just finding the balance between doing that and like just posting a selfie <laughs> you know but a selfie goes far a selfie does go far selfie does work it does selfies are hard though i people think i'm just like taking selfies all day i'm like i'll take a selfie and i'll be like oh like the camera just gets everything I'm like I'll, I'll, like I'll take like three and then I'll look at them and it just like ruins my day I'm like fuck for how many selfies for every one selfie you post how many <laughs> selfies are taken <laughs> um it kind of depends because like some days I'll have like a really like I'll be having a good face day so I'll be like you know I'll take like maybe like five selfies and then mm. I'll like pick the best one but some days I'll it'll be like 30 and then I'm like going through them <laughs> trying to find the best one I don't know but I don't take that many selfies like I think people think I'm over here just like taking pictures of myself no. all day but I really I don't like taking pictures of myself but you know the internet is very much a part of your identity mm -hmm. I, I didn't know this but you came out over Periscope yes yeah I was like what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I yeah, did. because Periscope doesn't even fucking exist. <laughs> I know. Anymore. I was like, "What's but, Periscope?" <laughs> but Maggie Lindemann's been on the internet for that fucking long. <laughs> old. <laughs> no, no, I'm old. Uh, <laughs> I'd be doing that shit on chat roulette. Okay, that's how old oh I am. Oh my god. Okay. No, but I, I chat mean, roulette. coming out as bisexual via mm. Periscope, yeah, is very trusting of the internet. Very right. Yeah, I used to um. I used to be really trusting of the internet. I don't. Well, just a part, like an extension of your yourself because yeah. it was a friend. It was. And that's the thing, like, because when I came out on Periscope, a lot of people were, like, you know, talking shit and, like, saying whatever. But, it, like, the internet for me back then was, like, a friend. Like, I didn't have that many friends when I lived in Texas. And the internet was always a place for me to, like, be myself and escape and just, like, talk my shit and, like, you know whatever because I didn't have a lot of people in my real life that I could trust and at that time it felt like the internet was just this community now it's like so different than it was but like back then the internet was so different and it just felt like such a safe place for me so I would go on the internet and like feel comfortable to like go on Periscope and be like oh I'm bisexual like I like girls and I would never do that now <laughs> like I would never do that now but for me at Isn't that time it, it was just is that you know. sad though that like the internet has turned into such a place of like fear and yeah hate and lack of like all just all judgment definitely it's i think it's sad too for like the people growing up now with it because it's it is so different than it used to be and it used to be such a safe place and such a, a fun place and now it's just all about like likes and looking your best and like face tuning yourself to look your best and back then it was such a just a place where people connected that's really yeah, I miss that me too I miss it <laughs> me too do you still do stuff with like clothes like you used to like put fabrics together and make mm -hmm. articles of clothing yeah so I have a brand called Swix so it sells Sick. in Zoomies and oh casual yeah <laughs> we sell in Zoomies are you rich from that 
Um, anyways, no, <laughs> I'm not rich from that, but you know, um, I'm not rich from that. I mean, but like, are you at every Zoomies? Um, I'm not at every Zoomies. Um, no, she I'm, probably is. No, I'm not. At, I'm not at every. There's a lot of Zoomies. No, there are. Yeah. A ton of Zoomies. So I'm not in every Zoomies, but I'm not even gonna say a number because like I'll get yelled at for saying the wrong number. But we are in a lot of Zoomies, and um, I fucking love Zoomies. Like how Zoomies is. Like you're like, oh, they're that cool store at the mall is like how they are. Like going to all their events and stuff. Like That's sick. I fucking love Zoomies. But um, shout out Zoomies. But yeah, so I sell on Zoomies, and um, I've had the brand for, we we launched in 2018. So oh, wow. So a couple years, and I love it. I love it so much. So wh- wh- how many how many pieces do you have? Um, We've made a lot. I don't know, maybe like 100-something now. And, and you change them out every season? Yeah, so we actually do limited edition stuff, so like online like on the swix.com website um once everything's sold out like you can't buy it again online like it, you can maybe go to a store and find it but like it's going to be sold out online so we do like limited edition drops um there's a couple things i really want to bring back but yeah it's like limited edition limited edition i like this yeah god i love it are you creating it. pieces that you wish existed for you or like what do you like what's your focus with it? Yeah, definitely. I think like when I used to go to Zoomies when I was younger, I would always go to the men's section because I just thought that's where everything was. That was cool, like Odd Future and Obey and like Diamond and all that stuff. Like I I that's the stuff I like to wear um because I felt like the girls section always was not as cool because yeah. it's like I don't want to go to the girl section and like look for girly stuff like I want to wear stuff that's like cool and like you know um so with Swix it's like making clothes that are for girls catered to girls but are cool and are also unisex like a guy could wear it if they wanted if oh. he wanted to um but yeah it's cute it's like little baby tees with like little skulls on them with like a little bow or like um, like these sweaters with like little patchwork on it. I don't know. It's just cool. It's just stuff that's like I would have loved to had seen in the women's section. Love that. Yeah. We need to get into this garment business, Daniel. <laughs> I know. I'm looking at this website. It looks like everything is straight out of your closet. You, I mean, I haven't looked in your closet, but I would assume if I did. Yeah. I mean, I mean it... my closet is literally <laughs> awesome. Like they'll send me boxes to check everything out and like give to my friends or whatever. And it's like. It'll be like 30 of like one shirt. So I just have so much Swix. I mean, dude, we need to get into this business. <laughs> it's, it's, what's going on with your album cover? Were you getting like roasted for it? Do people not like it? What, yes. Oh my God. People were like, why is she sitting on the toilet? Like she's literally taking a shit in her album cover. Like what is she doing? Yes. I was getting roasted, but, and people were like, it's so grimy and dirty. And I'm like, that's the point. Like it's supposed to look grimy and dirty. It does look very grimy and dirty, yeah. <laughs> You're in a bathroom sitting on a toilet with smoke everywhere. That's actually, it's funny too, because people were like, shit talking in the bathroom. That was my old bathroom. Like, I put oh, all those. in your house? Yeah. You lived there? I lived in that bathroom. Oof. I did. But that was, um, th- yeah, that was my bathroom. But the actual, pi- <laughs> it's funny because the actual picture, before like it got green and all that, like, it's not like a grimy vibe. It just looks that way because it's like all the smoke and like, whatever. But... There is an alternative cover. <laughs> I'm like, anyways, it's a good cover. Um, but the alternative cover is cool. It's like, it's like the sticks and so if you don't like the cover, there's an alternative cover. Oh, with like the tree branches that spell sucker punch and yeah. Pick. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Dan approves of that one apparently. <laughs> no, I think they're both cool. I just saw that you were getting roasted for the album cover. I was. I think it's because mm. people look at you like this pretty girl, and it's like not the most flattering yeah. photo. <laughs> Okay. Is that, was that was that wrong? Like no, it's okay because my whole thing is like, okay, yeah. People were saying that people were like, wow, this is like you could have been a little bit more feminine with it, like close your legs or whatever. But it's like <laughs> the people were saying that. I was like, okay, but the thing is, like, I don't want to be like hyper feminine. Like yes. I don't care to be super feminine. Like I am feminine, but like I don't care to be like it's not for me music and like photo shoots and stuff it's not about being pretty it's about being fucking cool like Mm -hmm. i want to look cool i don't like my selfies that's where i'll be like oh i look pretty in my photo shoots like i just want to look cool 
And to me, that picture was cool. Like, I felt cool in that. Like, it's cool to me. Um, but yeah, yeah. Pe- some people didn't like it. That's okay. Were you actually going to the bathroom at the I time? I wasn't. I had clothes on. Mid shit. Oh. Mid shit. <laughs> Take a pic. No, I, um,. <laughs> I had. I mean, I had people do that. On. People, d- I and the thing people is, people like, take photos while taking shits. I know it's a thing. <laughs> That's fucking funny. <laughs> Any love songs on this album? Um. So there's one song called "We Never Even Dated," and it's about a guy <laughs> I never even dated. <laughs> and it's kind of like a sad love song for him, which is funny now because like that guy, the guy I'm like, like was whatever over the album. It's someone now that I like literally don't give a fuck about and he's gonna listen to the album and like hear the song and be like Oh, is this about me? And I'm like, bro, please don't fucking text me. Like I don't care anymore. Oof. Is it the guy that we talked about last time you were on our show? I don't think so. It's not an ex. Oh, Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's not an ex. Okay. It's someone I never even dated. Like we didn't Oh wait, you tweeted on June 28th, only I could write two albums worth of songs about a boy I never even dated. Wait, I'm confused. So what is this person to <laughs> yeah. you? Like, do you know them or? Yeah, I know them. It's just this guy that like, I literally never dated. And I just like, always was like, oh, you know, like what it, what it could have been or whatever. So do you write multiple songs about this person? Because you said you had two, two albums. Two, I albums, wrote, worth like, I know. two albums worth of songs. And only one made it. Um, No, there's like, four songs on the album by so, him. So, do you want him to know? No, I, like, it's, I, it, like, I don't even want him to know, because it's like, if he's like, oh, is that about me? I'm like, oh, no. Okay. <laughs> you got a lot of music out of it. I did, but that's the thing about me, too, is like, I'll build something up to make it seem, like, so crazy in my head, so that I'll have stuff to write about. Mm-hmm. Love it. Um, And I needed him for that, but now he's useless to me, so. <laughs> got it. <laughs> on to the next. <laughs> Let's to the next. suck yeah. another soul and pump out an album. <laughs> yeah. Sick. Yeah, basically. God, I love that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. I love it. Yeah. Oh, man. How is it working with Kellen Quinn? Oh, my God. It's so crazy. So I actually haven't even met him in person, but um, I'm like thinking, I'm like, I hope not. Uh, no, I hope I haven't met him. I'm saying I hope I am not no, I wrong mean, like, about that. Yeah, I hope I um, didn't. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh, fuck, I hope. No, no, definitely not. I fucking love Kellen. But um, so crazy. He's like the one person I've always looked up to and like wanted to work with. And like Sleeping With Sirens is literally my favorite band ever. So to be able to work with him and like have his voice on a song with me is like, it's just insane. Now, how do, how could you do this to me? That's the song, right? Mm-hmm. Do you write that and take it to him or how do you? I guess you don't write yeah. together because you yeah, yeah. Never I wrote met it him. and then I was like here you go do you want to be on this yeah yeah and you got some screams on there got some I mean, screams oh yes I was like please scream please scream yeah. yeah you request that or do you just like let him do his thing no I just let him do his thing but like if he hadn't screamed on it I would have been like can you scream give me a scream give me a scream yeah hits yeah how are you building these songs these days like do you are you able to produce anything are you playing instruments or like do you take to your band and kind of explain how you want it to sound yeah so i haven't been um so i really want to like learn how to produce producing is really fucking hard (laughs) um but uh no so like i work with like a couple people who do like live drums or like my producer will do like guitar like live guitar i like live instruments Mm -hmm. there are a couple things on the album that aren't live um because i wanted to like experiment with other things but yeah it's like mostly live instruments Mm -hmm. poetry yeah matters to you Mm -hmm. you're a big fan of a poet by the name of shane koiskan yeah Mm -hmm. you have his poems tattooed on you so i have one on the back of my shoulders it's turning freedom of speech into freedom of cruelty um yeah, so I was actually supposed to go see him live, do like a live poetry reading. Like my mom got it for me for Christmas, and she completely fucked up and gave me like the wrong day and everything, so I missed it. It's okay, mom. Wait. But she was so upset about it. She's like, "I'm so sorry." Like, I was like, "Okay, girl." But um, Wait, that's... <laughs> it's like this whole thing too. I like you like cried. I I cried when she gave it to me. Yeah. Um, and um, <laughs> she she felt so bad. Like, she felt so bad. Completely missed it. She got me, like, meet and greet tickets and everything. Like, completely missed it. There's, like, a hair in my mouth. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> completely missed it. Um, And uh, it's okay. But, yeah, he's, like, insane. And he does these... Um, he does this poetry that's, like, mental health 
related and uh i don't know he's just he's amazing i love him do you do any of your songs take shape as poems first or do you write poetry yourself? yeah i write a lot of poetry sometimes like i usually won't take like an actual like sentence because a lot of the times it won't like fit into the melody i'm doing or whatever but i'll like switch it up and put it in but i um i stopped writing poetry for a while and i just restarted so i'm trying to get back into like doing it that way but yeah that's cool yeah just a way to kind of it just like a way to download your day or get whatever out yeah it's basically just like journaling but i do it in like poems (laughs) I do it in like rhyming words. Yeah. Sucker Punch is the album. Yeah. If you want to listen to Maggie Lindemann, we're going to put a link in the description below. Um, Can I ask a question? Yeah. Out of genuine curiosity, Mm -hmm. we can edit it out if you want. Okay. Is it painful to get a boob job? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Is it painful? No. It wasn't painful. It was just uh, uncomfortable really uncomfortable what, because like explain like have you gotten your wisdom teeth out i have got my wisdom teeth out okay so which is more painful boob job or wisdom teeth okay it's crazy because like i think i might have like a really good pain tolerance because getting my wisdom teeth out did not hurt like my face was really swollen but i didn't take yeah. any of the pain medicine mm. also with my boob job i didn't take any of the pain medicine what, I, what? Really? yeah i didn't take any pain medicine at all um, the only medicine i took was like my nausea medicine because i was so fucking nauseous the first day from what you think because they like pump you with um the stuff that makes you sleep oh yeah anesthesia yeah so i was like nauseous and they say like after you get it they put you in a room and like let you sleep for like an hour i was in that room for like three hours because i I, they like i wouldn't wake up like they couldn't wake me up i just kept like waking up and then being like "Ah." and then when i did finally wake up i was like nauseous i was like blue (laughs) nauseous as fuck but um no it didn't hurt it was just like uncomfortable and my ex had to take care of me. Like, I couldn't even, like, lift myself up or lay myself down. What, for how long? Like, four days. Well, so when were you, like, normal and ready to put on a shirt again? Um, like, after a week. Like, six days. Whoa. Yeah. And when do you start showing them to people? Oh, I was showing them, like... <laughs> <laughs> same day. I was showing them, like, same day. Yeah, I was, like... Fresh out of surgery? Yeah, I was, like, excited. I was, like... Still nauseous and blue. Yeah, Look I'm, at my like... Tits. No, literally, when I... And, like, my first thing... My first thing when I came out of it, I was, like... <laughs> I was, like, oh, my God. But, no, I was showing people, like, really early. I think I posted my first Instagram picture with them. Like, I think that was only, like, a week after getting them. They were, like, wow. high as fuck up. Everyone was, like, <laughs> fake boobs. I'm, like, yes, fake boobs. <laughs> the fuck? Does everybody go to the same doctor? No. I, I don't know anyone that's been to my doctor, but my doctor fucking slaps i've been recommending him to everyone sick yeah he was the best like not to do my own horn but like i think they look pretty good so i've been like no. telling all my friends i'm like go to mine <laughs> yeah you said boobs are the greatest purchase i've ever made they are still today you believe that i yes it changed my life like i'm not even kidding i feel like i felt like a little girl before i feel like i'm a woman now <laughs> like i don't have like a little boy pecs are they expensive um like- nine thousand Oh. Not as much as you would think. Oh. Yeah. Growing up, I thought like, oh, like 30000 or something. No. Yeah. Mm-mm. Fuck. Yeah. Are you even... interested in getting some? You know, honestly, the opposite. Like, <laughs> I, I could really use somebody to stick a hose in my man titty and suck some fat <laughs> out. Come out. Honestly. Uh, you know, okay. shape up some fake pecs for me. I, that'd okay. be, if anybody has that technology <laughs> at their disposal, get in touch. I, I want veneers all the time. Fuck, really? Yeah, even though my teeth aren't like, they're not like, uh-huh. They're not that the worst. Yeah, but like I'm also like fuck it. Like I'm fucking fake teeth, <laughs> but they're expensive. No veneers are expensive. Yeah, more than boobs. <laughs> like by I a lot. know someone that just got veneers and I, he spent like sixty five thousand dollars. That's insane. Yeah, That's... and his teeth were perfect. Yeah. I was like, why did you get that? He had like little tiny gaps. Oh, Jesus. like the, I like I have little gaps. He rich though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he rich. You got fucking much. diamonds in there still. God, I've been there for like three years. I can't. I can't. Do you have out. veneers? I don't have veneers. You have good teeth. Thank you. I had braces for six years. Yeah, fuck. Yeah. So did I. Didn't do shit. <laughs> you didn't wear your retainer. No, yeah. fuck no. That's where you went wrong. I still wear my retainer. Also, like, so do I every night. There wow. you go. So bury me with my retainer in. Yep. <laughs> 
for real. He beats it too. <laughs> no. I don't need anything else. That's all I need. Yeah. <laughs> that's like all. It's his prized possession. <laughs> like really, what do you what do you own that means more to you than your retainer? No, it's really it's chapstick and retainers. It's like all I need in my life. I get that. Mine's like lip liner. I'm about the same person. Retainer. Yeah. Wow. Does uh do the boobs? Did that give you the confidence? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how to make a transition, whatever. <laughs> Did it give you the confidence to do the Savage X Fenty thing? Okay, so no, because I did it before, too. Okay. Um, but the thing with me was, like, I was never, like, not confident in my own, like, body. Like, I, it was never like, oh, I'm embarrassed of my boobs. Like, don't look at my boobs. Like, it was never like that for me. It was just, like, I've always liked boobs. Like, I even when I was younger, like, I actually genuinely like the way fake boobs look. I... Like, you could have two balls on your chest, and I'm like, oh, my God, I love your boobs. Um, I like the way they look. <laughs> so, I don't know. I just, like, always wanted them, and I've always wanted big boobs. Like, my mom has boobs. Like, everyone in my family has boobs, and then I'm just like, no boobs. Um, but you were you were granted so, so many other things. I was, but, you're like, reaching, not boobs. You're rich in so many other ways. Thank you. Now I'm rich in boobs. <laughs> You do have to change them out though every couple of years, right? Um, What's the rule on that? You okay. do if they start like my doctor said that I could actually have them in like for the rest of my life if they never gave me problems. Wow. But you are supposed to technically change them out like every like decade or something. I uh, I made my way onto a, a place on TikTok mm -hmm. where they remove the fake boobs oh, and mm -hmm. then they like take it's like really gnarly. Yeah, but a lot of people request the silicone boobs like so they can keep them forever. Mm. Yeah, and display them and stuff. Wait, like keep like the silicone. Like once they take them out, yeah, like they want to mm. keep the silicone. Yeah, all right. That's really weird. Yeah, it is interesting. That's yeah, that's weird. No, I've seen the videos of them taking them out. Oh my god, it's not. And they're like, like wrapped in like wrapped a in hard like, shell. Yeah, it's so gross. I like cut them open. Uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> it's so gross. We clearly, yeah, we share some for you page yep. things in common. Yeah, sick. Sucker Punch is the album. <laughs> you gotta listen to it. It's on its way. September oh. when? September sixteenth. Put it in your calendar right now. Yeah. Whip it out. Put it in. September sixteenth. <laughs> Whip it out. Whip it out. Put it in. You, um, what are you thinking? Do you address the breakup on this album? No. Really? Three years? You nothing? No. Well, he's dead to her. No, he's not. He's great. Me and him actually ended on really good terms. I feel like um, I've seen you guys out before, like recently. Oh no. No, not in like the last like couple months. So we broke up in April. So probably. Well, maybe you just ended up at the same party by chance. Maybe I don't think we end up. Were you thinking about the same person? Yeah, Brandon. Brandon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. I I mean actually I we did see you at a party at like the beginning of the year. Was it I, <laughs> I do remember that. I do remember that. January? I, it was like <laughs> no, it was January like twenty seventeen. It's actually like, oh, yeah, it was last week. <laughs> no, it was definitely in like January. <laughs> it was like a long time ago. It was like New Year's. Oh, Jesus Christ. <sighs> the year is flying by. I, I, yeah, because it's, we live in hell. It's like fucking <laughs> monkeypox season. It's it's the worst. Oh, my God. It is the worst. Sucker punch me to the gut, please. So, <laughs> so I, we're not addressing that on the album. No, so I, I actually don't talk about it on the album um, because I finished the album while we were still dating. Mm. Yeah, mm. but I don't think I'm gonna probably address it in any. I mean, maybe if you need something to write about. Yeah, but like honestly, we ended on really good terms. Like, I truly have like nothing bad to say about him at all. No. Like, there was nothing that even like, there was no thing that happened that I was like, oh my god, we have to break up. It was literally just like we dated for three years. Like, I'm in a completely different place than I was when I was 20. You grow, so. you change. Yeah. You yeah. morph into the person you were meant to be. Yeah. Beautiful. Maggie mm -hmm. Lindemann, I really appreciate you giving us time and energy today. Of course. Thanks for having me. Dan has a question. I do. I saved this one for the end in case you're making me cut it out. But what were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Sucker punch. Listen to the album. <laughs> Maggie Lindemann, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>